Praise the Lord. Good to be here this morning. Uh, thank God for the health, most of all, for being here. We're going to go to the book of Ruth today, chapter 2. Um, this is where the Lord brought me back. I've kind of looked over it some this week, and I really don't know exactly what the Lord has for us, but it seemed like He wouldn't let me get away from this, so we're going to uh, try to maybe be a little different this morning. I don't know if we'll uh, start off and, and kind of lay a foundation, but the Lord wants to help somebody this morning to remind you that you're not too far out of His reach. Uh, praise God. And, and Ruth is a great book. If you've never read it, I mean, uh, I'll be honest with you, as far as reading anything else, I, I don't really enjoy reading. I enjoy reading the Bible, but this is a very short uh, chapter, a very short book. If you hadn't read it in a while, uh, I challenge you when you get home this evening or today, uh, uh, just set aside a little bit of time and read this. It's uh, so much uh, good in it. I mean, you could just preach out of this book for, for years and never get to the bottom of it, but uh, we're in the chapter two, when you get there, if you'd like to stand for the reading of God's word, as we said, thank every one of you for coming. Uh, it means so much to know that, uh, praise God, the Lord means something to you, enough to you that you would be able to come to church and, and to worship him, praise God, and to give alms unto him. He's the only one uh, that can make a difference in our life, praise God. And that's why we're here today. A lot of people are gathered today for other reasons of entertainment, and praise God, that entertainment can't help them. Uh, but there's one here today, I believe he can help us, friend. I don't know what you, your problem or your trial is or what you're going through, praise God, but the Lord wants to give strength to you today. He doesn't want to beat you down. So in chapter 2, I'm going to read maybe uh, to verse 12 or 13 in there until the Lord tells me to stop, and, and you'll be much in prayer for me that God be able to use me today. And the Bible said, and I'll lay the foundation once we get done here, but in chapter 2 of the book of Ruth, right after the book of Judges, and it said, and Naomi had a kinsman of her husband's a mighty man of wealth of the family of Elimelech. And his name was Boaz. And Ruth, the Moabitess, said unto Naomi, Let me now go into the field and glean ears of corn after him, in whose sight I shall find grace. And she said unto her, Go, my daughter. And she went and came and gleaned in the field after the reapers. And her hap was to light on the part of the field belonging to, unto Boaz, who was a kindred of Elimelech. And behold, Boaz came from Bethlehem, this sounds familiar, don't it? Came from Bethlehem and said unto the reapers, the Lord be with you. And they answered him, the Lord bless thee. Then said Boaz unto his servant that was set over the reapers, whose damsel is this? And the servant that was set over the reapers answered and said, it is a Moabitess damsel that came back with Naomi out of the country of Moab. And she said, I pray you, let me glean and gather after the reapers among the sheaves. So she came and has continued even from the morning until now that she tarried a little at the house. He's saying she'd been working all day. She hadn't sat down and been idle at all. Then said Boaz unto Ruth, Hearest thou not, my daughter? Go not to glean in another field, neither go from hence, but abide here fast by thy maidens. He said, Don't worry about going nowhere else. You just stay here and you can abide with us. Let thine eyes be on the field that they do reap, and go thou after them, and go thou after them. Have I not charged the young men that they shall not touch thee? And when thou art athirst, go into the vessels and drink of that which the young men have drawn. Then she fell on her face and bowed herself on the ground and said unto him, Why have I found grace in thine eyes, that thou shouldest take knowledge of me, seeing I am a stranger? And Boaz answered and said unto her, It hath fully been showed unto me all that thou hast done unto thy mother-in-law since the death of thine husband. And how thou hast left thy father and thy mother in the land of thy nativity, and art come unto the people which thou knewest not thereafter. The Lord recompense thy work, and a full reward be given thee of the Lord God of Israel, under whose wings there are come to trust. Let us pray one more time. You pray for me, that God be able to use me today. Father in heaven, Lord, as we come to you today, I pray, God, you'd be able to manifest this this sermon, God. I pray that you'd be able to manifest this this thought you put upon our heart, God, and and give the increase as we read today and as we studied already. God, I've done all that I can do up to this point, Lord, and I can't do anything else but depend upon thee to give the increase, God. I I pray, Lord, you'd be among the congregation here today, and I don't know the hearts of anybody, Father, but I pray if there's anybody lost, please save them, God. I I pray that hell would not receive any more, God, but the door of hell would be shut, and 
Nobody else would have to go to that awful place. And, and God, as we stand, we're going to depend upon thee. And, and God, as I open my mouth, I pray that you'd be able to give me the words to, uh, to say, God, to be able to give the increase here today. And Lord, we do it all in one precious holy name. In that name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen and amen. Thank you for standing for the reading of God's word. And, and like I said, this is going to be a little bit different when we get started here. We get to, maybe some of you have never read this story before. I'd like to uh, lay just a little bit of a foundation. But we know they said that uh, maybe Naomi and her husband and her, her two children, her two sons, they, uh, there was a famine in the land of Bethlehem. And, and they decided they'd go on to Moab, leave the promised land, and, and go back to Moab. But there was maybe plenty of food there. And it wasn't very long as I began to read. And maybe her husband passed away. And, and praise God, let me tell you something. If you leave the promised land, you're going to pay for it uh, one way or another. I'm not going to preach there. But, and they went to Moab, praise God, on the other side of the maybe the Jordan River, praise God. And, and they began to, to stay there. And it seemed like her sons, they, they went out and they began to, to find wives. And both of them married after the, the father had died. And it wasn't maybe 10 years after that, the, the two sons died. And praise God, they're going to keep losing the longer you stay there. And the longer you stay in the promised land, you, uh, you're going to keep losing things. And, and praise God, Naomi got to a point, and I'm trying to get to verse 2 where we started, but uh, Naomi got to a point, and she said, I want y'all just to go back to your family. I'm going to go back. I've heard that there's bread back in Bethlehem. And praise God, the house of bread is really uh, what Bethlehem means. And she said, I've heard that there's bread back in Bethlehem. And praise God, Ortha came up to her, and, and praise God, Ruth come up to her, and she began to tell them about how that maybe God had left her desolate and what no reason, and, and then waiting around, praise God, for another son, and there'd be no way that uh, she could provide for them another son, and, and praise God, they begin to pray and, and begin to cry, Ortha and, and Ruth begin to cry, and Ortha said, well, i just go back to my family and who I know, but Ruth said, I'm not going to go back to that, praise God, I'm not going to go back to my family, I want to go where you're going. She said, I want my God to be who your God is, and I've thought about it just a little bit, and I think she began to hear about the stories of, of the city of, of, praise God, bread, and, and the town of bread in Bethlehem, and I can just imagine her sitting around, and, and maybe you've done this before, you, uh, you've been around your family, your in-laws, and you hear them talk about something they used to do, and you thought, man, I'd like to have been a part of that. I can just see Naomi sitting around the table, and, and maybe talking a little bit about what it was like in, in the house of bread, and Ruth said, I'm going there. She said, I'm going to go and be your people, be my people, and she said, where you're going to die, I'm going to die. Uh, so that brings us up here to maybe chapter 2, praise God, and she began to go out and look, and I'd like to preach to you today, praise God, the redemption of a stranger, uh, the redemption of a stranger. Now, Ruth, said, I don't believe she'd ever been in this place before, and uh, you can read it if you want to, but I don't find no place that, uh, that Ruth had been to the, the house of bread. She'd been to uh, Bethlehem and a true worshiper, a uh, worshiping God. I don't believe that uh, uh, she'd been to that place before, but when she got there, I believe she was excited about it. Uh, she wanted to stay there, praise God, with Naomi, and, and thank God God, there was one that could redeem her, a stranger. Now, we go back in the book of Genesis. I can't remember uh, what chapter it is. I looked at it last night, but when, praise God, the Passover came, uh, God began to tell Moses, he said, now everybody can partake of this Passover, but not a stranger, not a foreigner, not anybody that's not of the circumcision, but praise God, there's one that came down and said, a stranger can be saved. A stranger can be redeemed, friend. I tell you about my Savior came down. I was a stranger to the ways of God. I was a stranger to the house of God. I was a stranger to the book. But you know what? That didn't stop my Savior, bless the Lord. That didn't stop my Savior from coming down and saving me. Ain't you glad the strangers can be redeemed? Praise the Lord. I don't believe that Ruth knew a whole lot about that place, just what Naomi told her. But she said, I'm going to help take care of you. And I'm going to go out. And there's a, there's a kinsman. You know what that means? That means there was a bloodline there. Praise the Lord. There was a bloodline there that, that Ruth didn't have nothing to do with. And you know what I found when I came to the house of God? Uh, there was a bloodline there that I didn't in my flesh have anything to do with, but there was one willing to take me, bless the Lord, and allow me to be his. And said I'd come in and sit at his table. The kinsman redeemer. And I'm glad. As she began to sing about that stranger, I think, praise the Lord. I'm glad when I was a stranger to the house of God. He didn't kick me out. The world said you can't come in. The world said, who is this woman? Who is she gleaning in the fields? Who told her she could get in this field? Now you go out here in Brother Wayne's field, start digging taters. He probably ain't going to be too excited about it. Now if you went and asked him, he'd probably let you. I don't find nowhere she went and asked. She just started standing around the corners. 
And you can read it in chapter 2 a little bit further. And she starts saying around the outside, they said that uh, years ago they'd leave the corners for the, the poor people and for the widows and all them people really didn't have food. Uh, they'd leave the corners there. So she said, well, they're down here harvesting this corn. They're down here harvesting this wheat. Uh, maybe they'll leave just a little bit on the edge. Uh, so he found her down there digging just a little bit and uh, picking the what's on the edges. And Boaz said, whose damsel is that? He said, whose is that? Thank God when I started to get close to the house of God, I started to come and stand on the steps just a little bit. I started to come and get in the parking lot just a little bit. Jesus said, who's that one belong to? Glory to his name. He wants you to be in his family, friend. And she began to go around and glean in them places. And Boaz said, whose damsel is that? He said, don't let her just glean around the corners. He said, wherever my people go, wherever my reapers go, you can go in with them. I read to you, he said, when they get thirsty, you go get a drink. He said, praise God, when they sit down to eat, you go with them. You know what God will do? Bless the Lord. He'll take a stranger that don't know nothing about the Lord and put him right in the house. Glory. Glory. You know what the Moabite people came from? I told you this a little bit about a couple weeks ago. You look back at the awful sin. Oh, Lord, help me here. You look back at the awful sin that Lot and his daughters conceived. That's where the Moabites came from. That's where the Moabites came from. Praise God. Can it get any worse than that? But God said, I'll accept that one to me. She wanted. You know what you first got to do? To be able to come into the family of God, you got to leave Moab. You got to leave that city that serves the idols. You got to leave that city that serves fake, fake gods and pagans. You got to leave that city and follow after God. Oh, Lord, it was a different for her, wasn't it? She said, I've never experienced anything like this. She said, I'm going to come in and he's going to let me glean and I'm going to take handfuls to, to my mother in law and try to take care of her. And, and Boaz said, Because of what you've done and you left your family, praise God. Sometimes you've got to leave things that don't feel good leaving to come to the Lord. She was willing to leave her family. She was willing. You say, who are you preaching to? I don't know. Probably just me. She had to leave her family, friend. She had to leave everything she known and said, there's got to be something different out there. You know what? The world said, she ain't got no business here. Anybody ever told you that before? You ain't got no business here. You don't belong here, boy. You don't need to be here. God said I could be here. It don't matter what nobody else thinks. What's the law? The law said no stranger. The law said no stranger could partake in this. You read the book of Genesis. The law said no stranger could partake in this Passover. What he's saying is the stranger couldn't be saved. The praise the Lord. The stranger couldn't be saved. The Moabites cannot be saved because the sins in their family. I say hogwash. I say hogwash. Jesus came to seek and to save that which was lost. It don't matter if you're a stranger or not. You say, what's the matter about being a stranger? Let me tell you something. If there's somebody here, I think we all know everybody. If there's somebody here today that nobody knew, you know what be happening? Who's that? Who's that? Do you know them? Do you think they got a gun? You think they're in? What are they here for? I'm telling you, it don't matter who comes in the house of God. God knows every one of them. It don't matter if I know them or not. Oh, I see Ruth. I see that redemption coming down of a stranger. Something that nobody else, especially not the Moabites, especially not the Moabites. Praise God, the, the, praise God, the conception of what happened with Lot and his oldest daughter, if I read it right. That's where the king of Moab came from. Moab came from and that's the one I told you a couple weeks ago. That's the one that came and the lineage of Jesus Christ came out of that. I believe it was David's great-grandmother. If you read it right, Ruth was David's great-grandmother. Glory to his name. You may feel dirty today. You may feel rotten today because of everything in your family. Let me tell you something. God said, the dirtiest of dirty, if they'll leave Moab, I'll save them. I'll send them a kinsman redeemer that will give them all they need. <laughs> oh, Lord. Boaz said, I... I don't want you on the edges. I want you to come in with us. I want you to come in with us. You know what would be good? If we could, and I thank you for doing it. I can see it happening. If you go out in this, praise God, and compel them in the highways and the hedges, come on in. God said you can be saved, friend. Oh, I've never been to church. Well, Ruth had never been there either, I don't think. I don't believe she'd ever been there. <laughs> the redemption of a, of a stranger the redemption of a stranger, friend. The Bible tells me that I don't have to no longer be a stranger. I believe in the book of Ephesians. I marked it, but I ain't going to read it. I won't be able to find it. In the book of Ephesians, he said we're no longer a stranger and a foreigner. But fellow citizens, friend, I'm no longer a stranger of God's ways. It's no longer a mystery to me. It's no longer a mystery to Ruth. What happens in Jerusalem? It's no longer a mystery. 
And it said to Boaz, as I read that to you, it said that when Boaz came down, he came from Bethlehem. <laughs> hey, my Redeemer came from Bethlehem too. My Redeemer came down from Bethlehem and began to look around. It said, come unto me, all you that labor and heavy laden. That's the same thing Boaz said to her. Oh, she's laboring hard, ain't she? She's laboring hard. I'd hate you went out. Praise God, I had the job before. After you pick corn, you always find some young whippersnapper say, I'll give you a penny apiece for every one of them cobs you can pick up that the corn chopper mixed, that the corn chopper missed or the picker mixed. So she was going around digging. It was hard. But thank God, Boaz said, let's give her handfuls of purpose. I don't want her to have to work that hard. If you work, friend, I'm telling you, it takes a work, don't it? Praise God, it ain't just going to fall in your lap. But God will make it easy on you if you call on him today. He didn't just say, well, I think there's about six ears back there I missed. Right there next to that big oak tree, I couldn't get the picker turned around. And if you want to go back there, you're more than welcome to have that. No. He said, you come on in. You come on in where everybody's picking. You come on in, praise God, where there's a whole lot to be picked. And come in there and pick all you want. He said, I don't want you to have to work that hard. I want to help you. I've seen the love you've had for your mother-in-law. I've seen the love you've had that you left your people and you said your God will be my God. Hey, she's seen something in her mother-in-law that she wanted, friend. Wouldn't you like to see something, somebody see something in you? <laughs> Wouldn't you like for somebody to see something in you and say, you know what I'm doing? I'm going to church with you Sunday morning. I'm going to church with you Sunday morning. I want what you got in your heart. Bless God, that's what a Christian should be like. Lord, would you help me to be more like you and less like me? I believe the disciples, and you say, well, that was them. Even the shadow of the disciples had power. Even you say, that's nonsense. Read the book, friend. Even their shadow had power. You know why? Because they was filled with the Spirit of Christ. They was filled with the Spirit, praise God, to love those that had a less fortunate one, to spend time with those, the widows and all these. Praise God, that's what the Lord wants us to do, to spend time and to be able to witness. Oh, Lord, I begin to see Ruth. At first, she'd come back. Oh, bless the Lord. When I first come to church, I'd come back with just a little bit. I didn't know a whole lot about the Lord. I'd just have a little bit of nugget. I'd take it back. I just got on the edges. You know what? Like some, I hope y'all don't do it for this, but some sit in the back just for that reason. Praise God, I've seen it all the time in my job. Just to have to take a little bit. Just to have a little bit. But you know what happened? When I began to grow in the grace and the knowledge of the Lord, He began to bind me down so much and give me so much purpose, I could hardly carry it out the door. He said, I'll give you more than you can carry, friend. Would you like to have more than you can carry today? Would you like to have more than you can carry? God will give you more. He'll help you to grow. He'll give you that miracle grow. You know how to make them tomatoes big? Put some miracle grow on them. God give us some miracle grow. Not that we grow too big for our britches, but God we'd be able to live for you and do exactly what you want. I believe Ruth stayed humble the whole time, don't you? I believe Ruth stayed humble. Oh, Lord, but Boaz, he came to her and he seen. There was another kinsman. We'll talk about that. That kinsman redeemer, that bloodline, as I thought about it. Never thought about it before. But when she was in Moab, when she was married to her husband, I guess she had a right to go back in. Hey, she was kin then. Thanks God, she was kin through marriage. The same way Naomi was kin to Boaz through marriage. I believe that Ruth was kin through marriage. But when her husband died, she lost it. When her husband died, she lost her right to come in in the way the law was. But you know what? If something happens to you, friend, and you feel like you're, you lost your right to come in, God will supply a way for you to come back into his house. Glory! He'll supply a way for you to come back in. Hey, my salvation don't depend on nobody else. It all depends on the Lord. And if this world tries to rob me, praise God, if my spirit tries to rob me, God will make a way that I can come back in. You may have failed him this week. I don't know. I may have failed him this week. I don't know. I may have went back to Moab. Hey, why'd they go to Moab anyway? Seemed like they had to be a little bit of bread somewhere. But they left, praise God, they left the city. They left the house of bread and went to Moab. How many have been in the house of God? How many, praise God, has been in his house and started to eat that good of the land and decide I'm going back to Moab? I'm going to leave and go to Moab. They're having more fun in Moab. You know what's going to happen in Moab? Hell, fire is going to come down upon them and they're going to burn, friend. I'd like to go back to the house of God, wouldn't you? I'd like to go back to the house. <laughs> oh, it never looked like. And Ruth never had no promise when she left Moab and followed after Naomi that she'd ever be able to receive what she received. She's just trying to provide for her family. You know what? Oh, Lord, I need to preach this to everybody. You know what happened, man of God? 
Woman of God, if you go to work, if you do exactly what God wants you to do, praise the Lord, if I do exactly what God wants me to do, there'd be a whole lot of blessing that would come down upon the house. I'm not just talking about working a, spirit, a regular job. I'm talking about working for Him. God, He gives us work to do. I say, well, let somebody else do it. Well, let somebody else do it. How about I do it, friend? I'm telling you, if Ruth would have sat at the house and said, I ain't doing nothing. Hopefully somebody will bring us something to eat. I'm hungry, ain't you? Hey, you think she'd have got fed? I believe God would let them get a little bit hungry. I believe God would let them get a little bit hungry. But thank God she had a desire in her heart to take care of her mother-in-law. She's seen the low spirits of her mother-in-law. You read it there. She said, I, be, I praise God, God has, has left me. I can't remember the words she said, but pretty much he's cursed me. He's taken everything I loved. He's taken everything from me. Don't call me Naomi no more. Don't call me that no more. I know she's seen the feeling that her mother-in-law was going through. And she said, I got to take care of this problem. Hey, there's somebody around you that's going through something. You can help that problem. You can help that problem today, friend. What would have happened if Ruth would have said, I'm just going to sit here and cry with you. I'm just going to sit here and be upset with you. That wouldn't have helped her, would it? Praise God. But she stood up and said, I'm going to go find us something to eat. I'm going to go get us and more than we can eat. I'm going to bring in just a little bit at first. But Boaz is going to give us enough. It's going to be more than we can eat. We're going to get the old pressure cooker out. We're going to start canning it. Praise God, it's going to last longer than just today. You know, in some countries, I've been to other countries before, maybe some of you have, they don't necessarily go out and buy groceries for a week. They buy it out day by day. They ain't got big refrigerators. They just go out and they buy just enough for that day. I've been there. I've seen it myself. I know how it works. Praise God, they go out and get a bag full of food, just enough they can eat for that day, and the next day they got to go back. You know what i got to do to the Lord sometime? God, i got to come back and get some more food. But if you'd like to give me enough to sustain me for the whole week, I'll bring a big bag with me. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I can see her at first going and gleaning the edge of that. I bet she didn't take a big bag with her. She thought, well, I probably won't get much today. I might be able to find a few grains of wheat or something. But I believe after Boaz said, you come on in when you want to, I can see her carrying that old big duffel bag. I can see her backing up that old tractor with that gravity wagon. She said, I'm getting a whole lot today. God will give you more than you can carry, friend. You'll have to get help. You'll have to get help. Oh, Lord. As she came to that city and Boaz began to see he began to see her determination and she wanted to be connected with him. She wanted to be there. He said, well, I'll let you, but I got to go talk to the other kinsmen first. I'm glad they was a kinsman that was worth receiving, that wanted to receive me. Her first kinsman said, I can't afford it. I can't afford it. You know what redeeming means? Praise God. The act of buying one's freedom. Glory! The act of buying one's freedom. You know your freedom's been bought, friend? Bought with the price of the high calling. Hey, you know what he was doing to her? He was buying her freedom. That first kinsman, he said, well, I really can't afford it. I can't afford to buy her freedom. I can't afford to buy that and take away from my family. Boaz said, I can afford it and I'll pay for it. You know what Jesus said? I can afford to pay for your sin. Glory! So you can go free. How's freedom feel today? How does your, somebody paid for that. Somebody paid for your freedom. You know why? Because he loved you. You know why you loved him? Because the Bible says, because he first loved you. As she came in, I'm about through. I'm not going to bore you. As she came in, praise the Lord. And she found out that that woman's going to redeem her. Boaz, a wealthy man. A wealthy man. Hey, can I tell you about one that owns a cattle on a thousand hills? I believe the book of Psalms, chapter 55, or right around there, 50. Chapter 50 tells me about that. The one that owns a cattle on a thousand hills. He owns it all, friend, and he can afford your sin today. Glory, 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 glory. As she went and laid down, he was in the threshing floor, and Naomi told her what to do. Praise God, if you study out Jewish history and, and their traditions and what they mean and how they uncover the feet and they give a shoe, and it's pretty deep. I'm not going to get into it right now in the pulpit, but it's interesting to study. And as she came to him, he didn't know who it was. But when he found out, he was satisfied. You know what happened today, friend? If you come to the Lord, if you come to the Lord, oh Lord, I've never seen this to right now. <laughs> As she came to him, she came to his feet. You know what happens when I come to the Lord? <laughs> Hey, you take this if you want to. I got to come to his feet. I got to bow before the cross that he died on and come to his feet so we can be one. I preached a message one time when two become one. Would you like to become one with Jesus Christ? You say, I already am. Well, praise God, do it again. Marry him all over again. It'll feel good to you. Come to his feet. Oh, she came to his feet and covered with his skirt on the feet. That was signifying that she would accept him and he would accept her. Oh, Lord, I'm glad Jesus accepted me. He didn't accept my sin, but he accepted me and he's cleaning me every day. I'm still dirty. I'm still rotten. I still need help. I still need God to give me strength. And you know what? 
He still says, come, 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 as she comes to the music. He says, come, the same way of redeeming a stranger. Boaz didn't have to do that. Bo, I don't read anywhere in here. And I don't know, it may could have happened. I just didn't write about it. But I don't read anywhere in here. Praise God, up until this point where a stranger could be redeemed. I don't read anywhere in here where a stranger could come in to the house of God, could come in and worship with the people of God. But Boaz said, I'll do it. You know why? Because God had a plan. God had a plan that the lineage of Jesse and the lineage of David would come straight down to the Lord Jesus Christ so that us who are polluted in our own blood, who look like we can't get out, who look like all the crime and all the hatred and all the malice and all this thing that's been in our family for a long time, God give us Ruth. <laughs> hey, you ain't too dirty to be saved, friend. How you think Ruth felt? She knew where she came from. She knew where her family lineage came from, friend. But she wasn't afraid. She wasn't afraid to come. And she said, I'm going with you. Hey, you know what I'd like to see somebody do today? She begins to play. You know what I'd like to see somebody do today? I'd like to see somebody say, I'm going with him. I'm going with him. I know my life's filthy. I know my mom and daddy did things they shouldn't. I know my grandparents did things they shouldn't. I know I've seen things at an early age I should have never seen. But forget all that. Paul said, glory. Paul said, I forget those things which are behind me. I forget those. You know what you've got to do today, friend? Ruth had to forget those things that was behind her. Glory and press towards the mark of the high calling. She had to forget those mistakes. She had to forget those things that was behind her. She had to forget all those things that weighed her down. She thought, how can I come in? How many today are sitting in the pew thinking I can't come be saved? If this church knew the things I'd done, they'd never let me come. Let me tell you something, friend. Jesus says you can come. I ain't nobody to stop you. That's between you and the Lord. How many people are sitting in there today? They some sitting in the church house just want to stay in Moab. That's just the way it is. That's just plain talk. It's easily understood. Some just want to stay in Moab. They like worshiping the idol worship. They like the things of the pagan gods. But I'm telling you, that ain't a way to die, friend. Ruth knew before it's too late. I don't know what happened to Martha. I don't know what happened to her. But she went back. She went back to the beggarly elements of the world. And Ruth said, I'm not going back to that. You know what I'd like to proclaim today? God, if you help me, I won't go back to Moab. I'll stay right here in the house of bread. Every head bowed, every eye closed. If you want to stand. Glory. Amen. The redemption of a stranger. Praise God. Some of you have been in church for a long time. But it's still a stranger. You're still a stranger. You're still a stranger to the Lord. He said, depart from me, you workers of iniquity. You're a stranger to me. He said, you're a stranger to me. Yeah, I've seen you in church. I've seen you cast out this. I've seen you do that. But he said, you're still a stranger to me. He said, I've tried. I've tried. I sent my son to die for you. But you're still a stranger. Would anybody like to come? You don't have to be a stranger. The Bible tells us. I done told you in maybe Ephesians chapter 2. We're no longer strangers and no longer foreigners. But fellow citizens. Oh, Lord. I'm a child of a king. His royal blood runs through my veins, friend. He's my kinsman redeemer. And his name is Jesus. Glory. Would anybody like to come pray? Tired of being a stranger. You ever heard him say, Oh, he's never met a stranger. She's never met a stranger. Hey, some say that about me. I just like to talk to people. I just like to see if they know who the Lord is. Never met a stranger. Would you like to be that today, friend? You say, well, I don't I worry about what somebody would say. Please don't worry about that. It don't matter. When you're standing there before the Lord, it's not going to matter if you got new shoes on. It's not going to matter if your fine house is paid off. It's not going to matter, praise God, if you got a brand new car. It's not going to matter how new your tractor is. I got a new one that's broke already. It ain't going to matter none of these things. All that's going to matter is that there was one day in your life, glory, there was one day in your life when you came to the feet of Jesus. Glory. You came to his feet just like Ruth did when she came to Boaz. We found her at her his feet, oh Lord. Oh Lord. Help us to be found at your feet. Oh, God. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Anybody like to come pray? Would you like to come out of Moab? Won't you come out of Moab? 
You started off right. But Moab feels good to the flesh. I must stand up here and tell you the truth. Moab feels good to the flesh. Even as a preacher that God called me to preach. Moab, I'm ashamed to tell you, but Moab feels good to the flesh. But God's got to help me stay out of that place. God's got to help me. Once I find myself in there. <laughs> oh, Lord, we got so many examples here. Ruth's never been to the house of bread. She just heard about it. Maybe you just heard about it. I want you to come taste and see that the Lord, He is good. Would you like to come pray? You know what? A church that stays together is going to have to pray together. I'm telling you, you're going to have to help bear one another's burdens so we're not just individuals sitting beside one another, but we love one another and we care for one another and we'll help each other carry their cross. Would you like to help somebody today carry their cross? I believe as I read, Ruth was doing everything she could to carry her mother-in-law's cross. She was helping her. She could have said, well, you can't do me no good. Just go on back. Or would you like to be a brave soul today to step out of your, where you're sitting in your pew and tell the Lord you'd like to help somebody carry their cross? You don't have to tell nobody else, but you see their cross getting heavy. You see them getting bound down. You see them, praise God, seem like they're about to turn back. There's a lot turning back, friend, and it breaks my heart to see it happen. Would you like to help somebody carry their cross? If there's somebody beside you, just gently tap them and tell them that you want to come out. You'd be surprised what I've seen at this church and everywhere else. When there's one that the Lord will finally convince to come to the altar, there's always others that are glad you came because that helps them to come. That helps them to come. Would you like to help somebody carry their cross today, friend? Would you like to help somebody? This altar is open. Thank God for these dear souls here. Anybody else? This altar belongs to you. This church belongs to you. Belongs to the Lord. Would you come help somebody carry their cross? You know you want to come, friend. How long has it been since you come to the altar and beg God to help somebody that nobody else would have to die and go to a devil's hell? Hell is real today, friend. Praise God, the world can make fun of it all they want to, but they won't be laughing when hell's burning them. I'm telling you, would you like to come? Would you like to come to this altar or bow down wherever you're at? Please, please, the stranger can be redeemed. The one that you don't think, praise God, a lost husband, a lost wife, a lost child, God can redeem them. They may be a stranger to his house. Praise God, they may be a stranger to his book, but I've got proof. Oh, Lord, if anybody you think would not be able to come in, it'd be Ruth. Born in a pagan society, praise God. Oh, came from bad lineage. But Jesus said, that's the one I want to be in my bloodline. Glory! That's the one I want to be in my bloodline. I want to prove to this dying, wicked world they can go free. And they can be saved today if they'll come to me. Anybody like to come before we pray? Please don't hold back. If you want to come, God wants you to be here. Don't be ashamed of it. It don't mean that you're lost when you come to the altar. This means that you want to help. Anybody else like to come? Anybody like to raise their hand? Say, preacher, I want to help somebody carry their cross. I want to help somebody carry their cross. Yes, 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 yes. I want to help, yes. I want to help somebody carry their cross. Bless the Lord. Yes, praise the Lord. I want to help somebody. I want to be there with them when they give up the sin. Praise God. Ruth said, I'm tired of this land. I want to go to another land that I've heard about God in. I want to go to a place that I've heard about what God does for His people. I want to go, oh Lord. I want to go to that place, don't you? Glory. Glory. Praise the Lord. Anybody else like to raise their hand before we pray? Praise the Lord. Yes, sis, I see you. I love you. Praise the Lord. Yes, praise the Lord. Yes. Praise God. There's a lot of crosses in this church today. There's a lot of crosses. You might not be able to see them, but I can. Praise God. I can see your cross today, friend. And God will help you carry that if you'll let him. <laughs> oh, Lord, if you're in Moab today, let's change your address. Let's change your address today, friend. Thank God. Thank God you can change the addresses. Ruth said, I don't live there no more. Can you see her running into some of her friends? I heard you moved. Yeah, praise the Lord. I don't live in Moab no more. 
God give me a place to live in a better city. Bless His name. He give me a place to live where God is there. And God is their God. And He's my God. Not just somebody else's. I'm glad He's your God, June. I'm glad He's your God, Wayne. But you know what I can tell you today? He's my God. And He said I could go free. Bless His name. Praise the Lord. Anybody else before we pray? Glory! Anybody else before we pray? Father in heaven, I come to you today, God, as an empty vessel. I don't have anything, Lord, but I got you. Praise the Lord. Memorial Chapel's got you. The world that's listening, they got you. If they'll leave Moab. But Lord, we got to leave Moab first. (laughs) Praise His holy name. God, I thank you for this service. I thank you for the song. I thank you for those that's playing. Those that's helping the Lord to sing or to hum the song, whatever they're doing. Those that are praying right now. God, I ask that you touch those from the least to the oldest. From the oldest to the least that raise their hand. Those that are going to try to help somebody this week carry their cross. You say, what's that mean? Well, when you get home, you go to your prayer closet and you ask God what it means. And he'll show you. He'll show you how you can grow. I ask you, have you been growing? That's a good way to grow. That's a good way to grow. God, be with those who raised their hand. God, be with those who came to this altar. I thank you so much for the opportunity. I know that I'm a worm, God. I'm the least among this great people here. And all those listening, I'm the least of anybody. But praise God, I read about one that seemed about the least. And you said she could be redeemed. You said no matter her bloodline, no matter where she was born at, they said she ain't got no business here. God said, I want her to be part of my lineage. <laughs> Glory. Amen. Praise the Lord. This world say you ain't got no business here. But God says, I want you to be part of my lineage. I want you to carry on the tradition to tell the world that Jesus saves. Jesus saves. God, wrap your arms around every one of them. I pray if there's anybody here that's lost, please, God, don't let them die and go to hell. I'd hate to have to preach their funeral. I would be honest with you, I don't want to preach it. Oh, God. I want to be able to tell them that they made that change. And I remember.